Hello, thank you for joining us today. My name is Joan Caparo and I sit on the Board of Directors of the Marin History Museum. It's my pleasure to serve on that board and today we're at the Kramer Family Collections and Research Facility in Novato on Laveroni. Very interesting place, very full. Am I right, Marcy? Yes. <laughs> now it's my pleasure to introduce our dedicated, I mean totally dedicated volunteer, uh, Director of Programming, Marcy Miller. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about Marcy. She runs a traveling trunk uh, school program in Marin to about 450 kids a year, I believe it is. Uh, you have probably seen her as she leads our historic walking tours throughout, throughout Marin. Marcy arranges artists, authors, and historic film series in Marin history in collaboration with the San Rafael X Club at Maple Lawn Estate, which is right next door to the Boyd Gatehouse where the museum presently exhibits. Thank you very much, Center Phil X Club. And now, Marcy, take it away. It's yours. Tell them all about it. I'm Louise Boyd. <laughs> Thanks, Joan. I am very proud to be able to show some of the artifacts mm. that we have in our collections. Over all the years, we have collected Louise Boyd artifacts. And hopefully, we can educate our public, and especially the school children, yes. on how famous Louise Boyd was, what she means to us, and her importance to all of us. Yeah. and the results of her research of Arctic exploration, what it's doing in today's um, news, and the research of our global warming and the mm -hmm. issues related to that. It's very important. But I want to share some of these artifacts great. with you, Joan. That's great. The first one I want to show that I think is that incredibly up. interesting. I thought it was remarkable to look at. Looks like a beach chair. It does look <laughs> like a beach chair, but in fact, this was a backpack, yeah. an actual backpack that Louise Boyd carried. Here's the straps. This would go on the back. I'll turn it around a little bit quickly to show you. This would be the straps on her back, and this carried probably up to 50 pounds of the type of materials an Arctic explorer would need traveling over the ice pack. Probably some food, some warm clothes, especially photography equipment. Louise did a lot of surveying, so there would be all those type of tripods and um, weighty things. This probably weighs 20 pounds in itself. Quite an effort to uh, pack this up and take it away with you. Louise? She was a pretty tall woman, wasn't she? Louise was almost six feet tall. Right. Yes, she was a large woman and very strong. Never, never needed a man to help her do anything that wow. she did. Let me start back. Louise Boyd inherited money from her father. He was a gold uh, prospector with the uh, cousins, no, the two brothers that owned Maple Lawn Estate, where it all right. started for the Marin History Museum's history. Her father was a prospector. He went on to manage very many mines in many states in the West. And when he died, he left his entire estate to Louise Boyd. She used that money initially with sightseeing. She would take girlfriends with her on ships in, in the North Atlantic, especially around Greenland. Mm -hmm. And they uh, would, something that happened a lot in that day, they would shoot seals. And Louise shot, I think it's 17 polar bears. <laughs> One we had on display here for many years until it lost its hide <laughs> and had lost to be. Lost its hair. <laughs> and, and I've heard rumors that it's located in the East Bay in a car dealership on, in a glass case. <laughs> but I don't know if that's true, but it maybe still exists. But after those two um, excursions that she went on, paying her own way, she decided she wanted to be a photographer and research this land. Her, what's, I could quote a little bit how she said it, she was on the ship looking inland at the glaciers and said, I want to be on that side looking out here. Oh. And that led to Louise being able to uh, align herself with the best photography equipment that was being invented in the day, mm -hmm. the best scientists that could escort her and educate her, because she had no education. She only went through probably eighth grade girls finishing school. So in all these I'm efforts sorry. that Louise did, she never married. Um, she didn't have a bank account. She couldn't vote. But she went on to uh, travel, I think, 13 explorations of the Arctic, studying the people, the land, everything that she did. I have a few more items I want to share did with you. Yes. I look, I'm looking at that backpack, and then looking at these is This like, is what, what she a traveled woman. by. Snowshoes. <laughs> and you tied them on? <laughs> and they tied them on. Wow. And these are two of them. They probably made these up in, in Greenland. And each explorer would have his own. These are well-worn, but they are preserved. And we yeah. have these on display here. 
Oh, we can just leave them on it. We can just leave them on the table. Too. Yeah, the table. so you can see a little bit more. They, um, I'm surprised. They're a lot larger than I would have thought snowshoes. Certainly not what you see on TV now. Another item that we have, we have no. um, Louise's binoculars that she used for all those explorations. And I was just looking at them, and they are very fine-tuned still. The, the yeah. glass is not warped or affected in any very way. Very small. May I look at that? Yes. Very small compared to everything yeah, else. Yeah, they're not too heavy. You had to compact. Louise was uh, financially oh. able to buy the Fabulous. best items. It's okay. interesting, um, in our collection, we have her shopping list. Louise never came on board without her makeup on. She oh. ate caviar. She drank fine. Uh, rum was her uh, liquor of choice and stocked <laughs> a lot of it on the ship. Um, but we have her shopping list and receipts from Amber Crombie and Fitch. And I find Wonderful. that interesting to be buying canned meats and different items that you would take in your perfume and your makeup and your heavy boots and your coats. We we'll have a whole aisle here. Of yes, we have a stuff. whole aisle on Louise's things. Eventually, Louise wasn't able to travel herself. And in 1955, she was 68 years old. She got her wish. She chartered her own DC-10 airplane and traveled over the North Pole and got to see it herself. They awarded her this... Um, unusual trophy. It has a picture of the North Pole. It's all carved into the um, metal and the picture of the plane. And it was awarded her by Thor Solberg in 1955 in June from Oslo, Norway as, a, as an honor that having been the first woman to go over the Arctic and to honor her for all the explorations that she did. And her information... What's that box in there? It's like a jewelry box. Oh, a jewelry box. That it came with this? Yes, it's all attached. Beautiful. Yes, yeah. Sure. Keep out the light. Oh, I see. Pretty it's attached. Cool. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. That's it's all wonderful. attached. That is wonderful. She deserves. That's it. quite a sizable honor to be uh, to be given. She has a glacier in a fjord named for her. It's the Louise Boydlin oh, um, Glacier to this day. Um, most of her information that her research she did is held in the Golden Meyer Museum in in um, Michigan. Might be Wisconsin. Air. Right. <laughs> They're close. So when Louise came back and could no longer go on these explorations that she did, um, it were incredible um, feats of, of stamina to be able mm -hmm. to do this. You know, the weather's not good, and uh, it, nothing is good up there for, as far as being out in the elements. Louise learned um, wireless communication, being in the magnetic field. And she learned all that and was going to publish a book and this was right at World War I. Mm -hmm. And our government learned that this was going to be published and came to Louise and said, please don't publish that. We don't want our, the um, information oh. that you would be publishing there right. to be let out. We are facing a world war. So they brought her down to work in the Pentagon. And I have to remember, in Smart. those years, couldn't vote, didn't have a bank account, wasn't married. Being in the Pentagon, knowing more Amazing. than the men did, you have to just really admire the woman yeah. for what she did. I do. Um, it was incredible to teach the men in the Pentagon wireless communications and what she did for the government. And also, as I said earlier, the records that she kept, the detailed, the diaries, all the information that she charted so meticulously, remember, didn't have an education. Right. Um, questionable handwriting, but, but was able to keep extensive records that they're using now to map the glaciers and the loss of the glaciers and the melting of the glaciers and all those maps that she has. That's wonderful. They're using those in their studies now, 100 years later. It, it's so p important. No one was doing that then, especially a woman who had money that could afford that. Well, and she's also in the uh, YWCA's Women's Hall of Fame, posthumously, of course, but she should be. She should and be. And I didn't know anything about her for many years. It's, it's amazing. The more I learn, the more I want to know. It is. Mm. And so having all these artifacts here, we encourage people to come up and learn right. about Louise. There's several books written on Louise um, from all edges. There's children's books on Louise. There's uh, scientific books on Louise. And uh, another source to research Louise is the Sam Rafael Downtown Library. They have large books. They have all her recipes. They were her favorites, her favorite restaurants. She could go to a favorite restaurant in San Francisco and get the, the recipe for that menu. Do you know, do you know what some those restaurants were, by any chance? I don't remember the names. OK. Yeah, I, don't but I know her favorite drink was talk. a Mai Tai. A Mai Tai. <laughs> 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 what was the wine So when in those Louise days? came back, 
and could no longer travel up the Arctic, she would bring some of those um, people from those uh, countries back here to work for her on her property at Maple oh, Lawn. Right. She didn't drive a car. She didn't fly. She, she took trains and then took ships. Other than that one flight, she took over the North Pole. But she had a Packard and she had her own driver mm -hmm. and she took that car with her to Greenland, over to Europe, <laughs> and the driver. <laughs> when um, she no longer was uh, living at the house and needing to be driven around, she donated that car to that driver in her estate, and he has that car. But this little polar bear, very heavy, this was the hood ornament on her car. Oh. And anyone who ever saw Louise driving around would have, would have seen this hood ornament. And um, of course, she wasn't driving, as I said. Her driver would be That's driving her. Feel how heavy that is? Oh, that is heavy. That's but Louise's thinking certainly yeah. changed after those first two explorations to becoming a scientist and a researcher to preserve the history and the lands of the um, North Arctic. And it was uh, closest to her heart. Didn't she once, she killed a polar bear. She killed a polar bear, she killed many seals. But and her traveling changed. people with her, and then she changed, yes. She changed yes. Became, Her thinking changed. Right. When she finally decided I want, she wanted to be on the other side of that ice pack looking out and record that. Mm. She really persevered. She was dedicated to it, recording it, and keeping it um, for posterity. She was uh, a member of the North American Geographic Society. That's how she funded her uh, travels. She would donate the money to them. They would plan the um, exploration because men would not align themselves with a woman if she was writing the check. That was the strongest thing that she had to Well, uh, that preserve. one's changed. Yes. <laughs> yes, it has changed. And that's good. Yes. That's good. I, I wonder about uh, the story you told one day um, about the Chinese gentleman who, or Asian gentleman who used to be her driver and how she sent him home. Do you remember? He wasn't the driver. Her he mother had extensive Victorian gardens on the Maple Lawn property, I which is next to the Boyd oh, right. Gatehouse. Gardner. And I can't pronounce his name, but he had worked on that property for over 50 years. He mm -hmm. also worked in the kitchen. He had his own little house on the property, which is still there that you can see, that has two huge um, staghorn ferns hanging on it, and they're as old as he was. Um, and when he retired and wanted to go back to his country, Louise paid his way to go back there, but he was a dedicated cook and master gardener of her properties until then. Maple Lawn was um, named for the maple trees that he planted there. It was right. also known for camellias, and Louise Boyd always wore a camellia flower mm. on her lapel. She was known for her open house parties that she had at Christmas time, invited all of the community there. It was open house free, special wow. invitations that we have copies of. Where's and our Lu Louise Boyd today? <laughs> <laughs> so those uh, parties, the Marin History Museum continues every December, the open house we to have the community. Open house. Mm -hmm. In honor of Louise Boyd. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Yes. That's great. Yes. Well, she well, has a lot more to see here, too, though, if There's you come so out. much more mm -hmm. to see. There's so many things um, that, we, that we have and other places, and it's just incredible to go back and look at history. The pictures, the photography. You know, having money made a lot of things possible for her, right. and she shared them all. She was a wonderful. She died penniless this. in a convalescent home in San Francisco. No, um, she died in. Uh, she was in her seventies, but she has spent all her money on these explorations and, and and saving people and and being a philanthropist. Well, you can't take it with you. No, <laughs> so good for her. No. No. She shared them all. I think that is absolutely fabulous. And uh, now we have the family home or one of the small houses. We have the guest house located. that was situated at the gates to the uh, master property, the large estate right. next door. The Cook brothers that were her great uncles were founding settlers in Marin County. They mm. came here, went up to Bodie, found their, made their fortune in the Bodie Bonanza, and brought back and established this home in the extensive gardens and all the things that they did for San Rafael. But their home was the Elks. Yes. Right, the yes. Elks Lodge. Okay. The Elks Lodge is located in the Maple Lawn. And our exhibit right now, of course, is the Women's Hall of Fame pictures again, and she's in that. Also, we had Dorothea Lang, and we have faces of Marin. I mean, old faces of Marin, like in the early 18, 1900s. There was a book called The F uh, Four Winds, and it was described four women that were just significant, um, significant women of, of the United States, and Louise is one, um, Livermore is one. Oh, yeah, Carolyn Livermore. Um, the woman who worked um, on the um, Civic Center. Oh, yeah, Vera uh, Schultz. Vera. 
Mm -hmm. and I can't remember the fourth one. How I'm really old. I know all these women. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all Hall of Famers. Yeah. So they're right. all in a good crowd. Right. Yeah, they really are. So I, we just encourage everybody to come and see the exhibits that we have in San Rafael. And, um, it, you know, it's, it's wonderful to know more about women like this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that young students need to be uh, more knowledgeable of. And, of course, we work with Dominican and have students on, uh, once a week. That's something I always think about. I grew up all my life in Marin County. I didn't know about Louise Boyd. Uh, well, I and now I just, I, I just marvel at it, and I try to bring the subject up to young girls to, um, to the elementary schools when I go out there, that we have a woman who did an incredible thing that right. you, we can thank for, um, for what we have yeah. and the preservation of land and stuff. Well, I, I, I just think it's so exciting that the Dominican students are coming out here and learning, though, now. I don't, some of them are looking at Louise Boyd, I think, and uh, have different um, ideas about what they want to explore. Yes. But they're coming to the museum, and Jocelyn is helping them. And We have a fantastic library do. here that needs to we be do. used more. Our librarian is here on Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 10 to 3, and any other days by appointment, they can I just call. Go to our website at www.marinhistory.org make okay. arrangements, come and study something. This uh, collection facility here that we're sitting in, it has IJs in hard copy yes. back to 1850s. We have land titles back to 1850. I think the newspapers are 1860s. We have all the newspapers from we the have IJ. A, but there's nothing more fun than to pull out no. an old newspaper, look at the old ads, Th things like that. And what was what made the front page in those days? And see what they, oh yes, that was different. Mm -hmm. And also see what things cost. Mm -hmm. Yes, especially the cost. I and think that's very yeah, fun to look at. And they had everybody that was born and died and hung and. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, and hung. <laughs> yes, we have the San Quentin records here too. We have um, 200,000 photographs yeah. on file. Right, and, the, and artifacts are. 20,000 yes, plus. And we have a, a Brady collection who photographed the uh, Marin County uh, aerial views. They are so fantastic to yeah, look at yeah. and try to find a you are here mm -hmm. landmarks and see what, what, what Marin County looked like from the sky when 101 was two lanes. Well, and we did our memories book here recently, which will come out in That's December. Fantastic. And you really ought to, if you'd like to buy a memories book, it's $100, but it will include a beautiful picture, uh, a painting, I'm sorry, by George Sumner on the 50th anniversary of the Golden Gate Bridge. And that's right, on November 18th, we're having the special showing at the Elks Club, so please look that's for right. that. That's right, and he'll be there. George Sumner and his wife, Donalia, will be there. That'll that's be gonna great. be wonderful. And you know, that's to help support your Marin County history. That's so important. And a whole book of everybody's pictures that everyone has a few pictures in their own right. home and they brought them out and shared them. They're scanned into the book. It makes it very personal. It was very interesting listening to the people that came to bring their pictures, how excited, excited they were about their yes. grandparents and yes. where they went to school. And these were people who were probably in their 70s and 80s. That's it's what I like. Things. Yeah, I did too. It was great. So we have so much to offer, and it's great to uh, get this opportunity to share this kind of information with the community. Um, thanks to Ed Dukowski and his team and all the work they have done to make this happen. So. Uh, we feel really privileged, and this is the first time I think we've done this that I can remember since being on the I board. I haven't known of it. You haven't known this of it? This has been a great experience. Um, I, I just encourage anyone to come in and visit here. I'd be, I'd be glad to share anything. There's nothing more fun than go in that other room and open a box and go, oh. I know. Oh, my gosh. Now that I've opened a couple, it's Different exciting. special things we have. I was sharing um, with a gentleman here. We have Napoleon Bonaparte strong box that right. came from France via... New Orleans, then New Jersey, and came out here because Napoleon Bonaparte's relatives owned land out in West Marin. But it's empty now. What happened to... We don't know. <laughs> it was a I'm great sure. opening when we had the key and we it, opened it. That is exciting. That's really exciting. Well, I think we're going to have another segment also coming up about everyday items down the road here. And when you do that, I think it's going to be a little more animated because we may have to walk around and pick things up. and. Um, I know that you're going to act like it was you were a woman living in those days. Yes, that'll make it very exciting. That's what that part of the trunk program when I take history out to the classrooms because you know due to current budget cuts the students aren't able to come to the museum. Right. And we don't always have on exhibit what meets their curriculum and what they want to see. So to take it out to a classroom and show say yeah. a third grader 
how mom did the laundry in the 1870s, mm -hmm. how you answered the phone, what it took to answer to iron your clothes. <laughs> you know, there wasn't a keypad on your iPad. It, what a real t a typewriter. Um, iPad was a was a patch over your eye. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. it's really fun to look at these things and to laugh about them. But yeah. it wasn't that long ago. No, I know. I can Not remember my ago. grandparents. Uh, so going it's a great experience to share everything, and I can't. Uh, I can't even invite people enough to come and see what's here. And when come to think about it, it isn't just my grandparents. I can remember my mom using a ringer washing machine. Mm -hmm. You know where you don't. I mean, my goodness, I'm only at 35. Um, Louise Boyd is one now, actually one of the women that I admire the most, to get back to her, because to think where she came from, even though it was an affluent family, mm -hmm. and then to think that she took that money and used it really for the benefit of others. It, yes. It was because she wanted to take she those shared trips. That. She shared I think it. she got excited when she first saw that and thought what, what she could do. Right. You know, there's one part of you that can get on a cruise ship all dressed up in your mink stoles and go dancing and, and have the party life of those early um, she Post wasn't Victorian like that, right? No, no, she, no. She, she decided, I don't want to do, I want to be on the other side of this ice, looking out and record that. You know, my mother-in-law is 89 years old, and she remembers Louise Boyd driving around with her driver. You probably saw. And she said, she saw that hood, and she said, you know, she was a very nice woman, so I don't know how she happened to know that, but she must have seen her talking uh, to people, and she was very friendly. And the thing that amused me that my mother-in-law said was, and she just wore a house dress. Yes. Her opinion was she mm -hmm. was just wearing she a house dress. She was very comfortable. She was yeah. comfortable. I was really interested. We're very lucky. And um, the Elks Club is, uh, Louise sold the, her Maple Lawn Estate to the Elks Club in 1963 for $350,000. Wow. They have preserved it and have not altered that house in any way. Every September on Louise's birthday, we celebrate it. And the Elks invite us to come in and I do walking tours. So oh, if great. anyone would like to see that, always look for the September events and you can come in on tour and walk around and see how Louise had her house set up for mapping, recording all her, her uh, botanicals that she recorded, how, how she operated the kitchen. It, it's just fantastic to have it still own. standing there. You know, how often do we get that opportunity to do that? Well, I came to your Elks Club presentation on the Boyd House recently, yes. and I guess that was it, right? That was right? a September event, It yes. was very interesting because uh, some of the stories you told, it, I just had never heard before. So I, I'm happy to know that you do it every year. I didn't realize that. On that property when she developed it, she put in an Olympic swimming pool. Yeah, luckily, luckily, John Boyd um, preserved the water rights on San Rafael Hill, and the uh -huh. water that comes off that hill waters the Boyd Park, wow. Maple Lawn, Falkirk, and San Rafael City Hall. Still to this day. Oh my goodness, I love it. Yeah. It's smart. It's, it's still going on. Well, I, 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 I'm thinking about the other things that we know about the house. Um, just a real quick tidbit that you said to me one time that I'm not ever witnessed is that maybe there are ghosts there in that Boyd house. <laughs> Tell me a couple of stories that I There, you there told are me. probably more ghosts in the Boyd Gate House, uh, no, in Maple Lawn than there is at the Boyd Gate House. We've had paranormal explorations done. The Elks have had, uh, there's an Elk member from Fr Fresno, I believe. He's come over and did quite a study. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting in that they do a control investigation where a group of, of guys would go in the room and nothing would happen. A group of girls would go in that same room, and all kinds of things would happen. Little lights would flicker. They'd hear <laughs> singing, different things. So Louisa no. obviously liked to hang out with I the girls, it. and that doesn't mean anything by that, other yeah, than yeah. she she related more to their activity. Right. But there's um, some kind of something goes on downstairs in the p billiard room, and and the uh, cook that uh, the actually the uh, kitchen cleaning man who works at the Elks all the time won't even let me say the word paranormal to him. He is scared to death. He gets the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> things are going to take him. And he gets all disturbed. <laughs> He's there late at night and he hears things. Well, you told me one time about some fellows being upstairs fixing something and uh, they said quit whistling or something, right? Oh, we, oh, in the Boyd Gatehouse. Right, we get Boyd. whistling and uh -huh. all kinds of things. And we have the recordings and we have little films. So if anyone's inter interested in paranormal activity in Old Victorians in San Rafael, we have two DVDs that you can come and watch. They're fun, interesting, I don't know. 
Another fun thing that's happened at the museum is the uh, Mysteries of the Museum. The Travel Channel show has come and done a couple of tapings with us, and they have been very fun. And they're interesting to watch those studies, too. We have so much history. Well, it goes on and on. When you first told me about that paranormal, I thought, well, no, I, n I never see or hear anything. And the other day I went up there. I was by myself. I went upstairs <laughs> to pick something up, and I ran into this little chain that had a sign that said no admittance, and I didn't know it. And it was going back and forth, and I thought, oh my God, they're here. I was so, like, I wasn't afraid. It was just like, I thought, what do I do if we I see them? You have to remember, <laughs> that house was built in 1879. The lights yeah. will go on at night. I'm sure it's from a short. There's well, a flicker. I, I don't know, Joan. You don't, no, you, you don't believe it, right? No. <laughs> okay, well, Marcy, I want to thank you so much for your entertaining presentation of the Le Louise Boyd's Arctic discoveries and explorations. And um, I do want to encourage people to come to the Boyd Museum and out here so that you can uh, witness what we're talking about, uh, everything that we're talking about. And more. But, and more. And I want to thank our viewers. And we, we hope that you are members, that you will support the uh, Marine County uh, History Museum because we are working hard to preserve the artifacts and the pictures and to share them with everybody from the young people to the not so young. So uh, we're really grateful to the team here that has put this together and to help us share this information because without your help we don't retain the success of having members and um, I'm a member I pay $100 and it's great I want you to know I've earned that $100 back within two months so thank you again. Thank you, Joan. Thank you.